welcome back everybody to another episode of the Meeple Marathon and today we're going to be talking about Above and Below. Uh, I recently released a, a video of the top 10 games that have been inspirational in my life uh, as a board gamer and in the hobby. Uh, you can check that out on YouTube. And um, I decided that I had talked about a lot of games that I, you know, uh, aren't uh, as current, maybe don't have as many videos out there, and so I just kind of wanted to maybe entice people to uh, want to pick up the game and play it themselves. So I'm just going to be going through that list slowly and, and surely uh, when I have time. And so today I wanted to talk about Above and Below. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to cover the rules of Above and Below, and then I'm going to cover a solo variant that again, similar to Batman Gotham City Chronicles, is a uh, fan-created variant. This is not a Ryan Lockett or Red Raven Games official solo variant. Um, but I think it works, I think it has a lot of merit, and um, so I'm going to talk about how that plays, and I'm going to talk about what I'm going to add to it. Then in our next video, I'll do a full playthrough using that solo variant uh, along with my few additions uh, to see how it goes. And you guys can be the judge as to whether it functions well as, as a good solo game. So um, let's go ahead and get started here with the regular rules for Above and Below. Essentially, this is a worker placement game. You can see you have your home board here, and these are your three starting workers. I have a worker that can hire someone, I have a worker that can build, and then this guy is, uh, you know, he cannot build or hire, so he's pretty much our explorer. You can see that all of these symbols with the, um, what are considered lanterns on them, are the exploration symbols. So this individual, as long as you roll a one on the die face or higher, he gets at least one lantern while exploring. And if he rolls a three or higher, he gets two. Um, whereas these other guys, say for example, this builder is not nearly as good at exploring because you have to roll at least a four, five, or six for him to get any exploration lanterns. Um, essentially those mark your successes on skill checks when you are delving below uh, into the caverns below to unlock more areas for your little village. Um, the purpose of the game is to build up your village both above and below. So you can build these huts, these buildings here are buildings that can be built above, and these here are considered outposts. They are essentially underground buildings that can be built underneath your town. Now the trick is, however, you actually have to explore and open up the underground first before you can build above ground. So um, other than your starting hut here, which has three beds and that's it, you will actually need to start unlocking caverns, okay, empty caverns along the bottom. And then for each empty cavern you have along the bottom, you can build a building on top. And then you can also build an outpost into the empty caverns. So by the end of the game here, we'll hopefully have a nice little row of houses or buildings and outposts down below. We'll have quite a few uh, workers. And um, while we are building, we also want to do stuff like harvest goods. And so you'll see a lot of these cards that once you add them as buildings, well, not that one, will provide you goods that we're gonna put along this track here on the bottom. The further along this track you get, the more victory points you not only get at the end, but as you stack multiple of each type of good on top of one another, then say for example, if you can build all the way up to here, you are gonna be getting five victory points per good that is in this stack. So, but you, can never put uh, a good down. Let's see, th this is easier for me to explain with a visual here. So let's say that these are your goods that you have in front of you. Now more than likely you would not have all of this collected up here at one time, but let's say you're starting with this. So you could start by putting this apple down here and you could also put this amethyst down here and this fish down here. Now if I want to put this apple down I am not allowed to put it there. 
I have got to stack it up on top of the other apples, which means I have, from the time I put my apple down, decided that my apples are only going to be worth one point uh, at the end, one point each at the end of the game. All of my fish will have to be stacked up here, and then if I get any new items in, they will again be placed at the far or you know first open space from the left. Uh, so all of my mushrooms will be worth three points. So at this point of the game, I'm going to want to go after mushrooms instead of apples because they're going to be worth more points to me. Uh, so that's how you score points at the end of the game based on the goods that you are harvesting. So essentially just think of it as this little you know, farming community where you are building out your buildings and your outposts and your farming goods for end game uh, victory points. What one of the coolest things about the game is, of course, the encounter book, which um, I don't know if this was the first game ever to do it, but it definitely helped push the popularity of these exploration types books and has now become Ryan Lockett's kind of signature piece. Uh, essentially, when you enter a cavern, which will look like this, you'll see that there are some numbers here and you're really just gonna roll a D6 and then you're gonna read out the number based on this. So let's find an easy one. If we rolled a two, we would go to 26. So I'm not gonna leave this up here for very long, but essentially you're gonna read through this text and then these bold text are the skill checks that you need to make. The text next to the bold text is what you win. So normally when you're playing with multiplayers, you'd have the person to your left, read through the text, give you your options, you make a choice, and then you make your skill check by rolling uh, these dice. And, and so essentially, you know, you're gonna roll a dice for each person. If this person rolls a one or a three, he's pretty good. If this person rolls a four, you know, he's only good then. And so it makes a difference who you send exploring, and you always have to send two people exploring. Um, so that is how, um, that's how you explore. Um, and that is one of the actions. Essentially, each turn you can take a, as many actions as you have people for. So we'll start with exploring, which we just discussed. Exploring, however, always takes two workers. You can never go down into the caverns below. So you send these two workers, you go exploring, and then you're gonna use these symbols at the top to determine whether you are successful or not. After you're done exploring, they go to the exhausted area, which is here between the trees. You could also send someone to harvest. You simply just send someone up here, and then you send them to the exhausted area. You harvest off of the cards you have built in your outposts or buildings. So if you don't have any items out yet, you certainly aren't going to want to harvest. But say you have added this building here and this outpost here. And this is what your town looks like and you go to harvest. You can either choose to harvest the clay pot or you can choose to harvest fish. Now, the first time you put this token or this building down, you're gonna take, you see the two pips, you're gonna take two clay pots and you're gonna put it down there. You're also, once you put this one down, would take a fish and you would add one fish. Now, say I harvest this once and I harvest this again, this is now spent. It got two clay pots and then that building is done. However, this fishing spot at the beginning of every round or between rounds, you are always gonna make sure there is a fish on this spot. So if I harvest this fish this round, next round, there'll be another fish there. So that's just something to consider. Um, when you're looking at the iconography, the arrows means that it is uh, replenished. This arrow happens to mean you can reroll, but the pips mean that you're just going to add that many number of that resource in, and that's uh, not infinite. It is a finite number of resources that once you use them all up, you're done. Um, the next one is building. Now someone has to have the mallet symbol on their token in order to build, but all you have to do to build is put a player there, commit, and then pay the money. And you can see here that this one costs eight, six, nine, seven. These at the top are key buildings, which means they're generally cheaper and easier to get at the beginning. And then you have some buildings way up here, some of them are off screen, that are more like end game buildings. They are very expensive, including this one at the very end that is worth 18 points. It's gonna give you three VP at the end of the game. 
and two per building, above ground building that you have built. Whereas say this one is gonna give you seven VP and two per below ground building. So, and that's worth 60. So these are always there at every game. The key ones, you will shuffle out four per game, put the rest back in the box. And then the regular set of buildings and outposts just have a big stack that we shuffle through and deal out. Uh, once the key buildings or the star buildings are gone, they don't get replenished. Um, so that's building. You can also send a person to recruit or hire. In this game, it's called hire, which means you essentially have the feather icon and you can go up here and recruit a person to your team. Um, this person costs two money to recruit, three, three, four, and five. And at the end of every round, say I were to purchase or hire this gentleman here, and he immediately, when you hire someone, they go into the exhausted spot. At the end of the round, you're gonna shift everybody down and refill at the end. That way, people like this person becomes cheaper in the next round. And just for reference, uh, these guys are randomly chosen, but I'm pretty sure this is the Ryan Lockett token. He likes to draw himself into all of his games. So I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be Ryan Lockett. Uh, and there's also a reputation track here. Uh, since I'm gonna be playing a solo game, I just have one cube, but essentially things that you do underground during your exploration can gain you or lose you reputation. And the further along the track here, you can see the more VP at the end of the game you can get, or you can actually lose VP uh, at the end of the game. If you're playing multiplayer, you can actually get first, second, or third, um, but we're not gonna play that in a, a solo game. This last thing here is a round counter. This simply means that once you get to the final cavern here, which is seven rounds, the game is over. Um, okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is how you get your players back. So obviously you send them out to do their jobs and they all become exhausted at the end of the day. All right, and once you're out of people to do actions with, you're gonna have to pass. Now, to get your players back from being exhausted to ready to go the next day, they have to have a bed to sleep in, which you see we have three people starting with and we have a house with three beds in it. So if we did not hire anyone else, all three of our people could move from exhausted to rested and ready to go. Say, however, we had recruited and hired this green man, but we didn't build any additional beds with buildings in it, we could only pick three guys to go back. Now, there are ways to get people back without having a bed. One of them is the cider token, which one sits on this board every round, it gets replenished. If you are the first person to choose the labor action, which is way over here in the corner, and that simply gains you one gold. It basically means you have nothing else to do, you don't have enough money to spend on anything, you're gonna labor. If you are the first person to labor in a round, you're gonna gain the cider token here. Cider can move you from the exhausted into the rested. Consider it like a, a strong drink of coffee. Um, or there are times where when you go exploring, you may become injured. So say, for example, you have this set up at the end of a round. These two guys would sleep in a bed and be moved over here. Now there is a third bed, so this guy sleeps in a bed, but he goes from injured to exhausted. He cannot go all the way to there. But if you have acquired a potion or medicine, as I like to call it, you can give someone medicine to heal them and then they become just exhausted and then use the bed to push them over all the way to the left. And again, these are just something that you gain during exploration. Sometimes they appear, like you can see this hut right here gets you two medicine when you purchase this card and add it to your collection. Um, so that's how you get people back ready for the next day. So you need to make sure that you are building buildings with beds in them that are going to accommodate all of your workers or you could be leaving people stuck here in the exhausted area because they had to sleep on the floor and they're not ready to work the next day. Um, as I said before, people can become injured when they go exploring. You can also exhaust or purposely injure someone on an exploration. I forget what the term is called, but essentially you're, instead of exhausting them, you're gonna move them all the way over here to gain you one additional lantern. So say you come up just one lantern short of 
actually being able to accomplish your task and you really don't want to go home empty-handed you send one person to the hospital here to accomplish your task so that's just another way that people can become injured but nobody's going to become injured harvesting or building or hiring or anything like that only during exploration do people ever become injured so we have talked about how we build out our uh, little town here we've talked about how we build up our achievement track with the goods um, we've talked about our reputation track here and how we can earn or lose reputation we've spoken about the cider I think that is pretty much all that we need to discuss oh the only other thing that um, one might want to do is especially during a multiplayer game if you have a good or say a cider token and you don't feel like you're gonna use it you can put it up for sale which means you put it up here on this three plus uh, that alerts all the other players that that item is for sale and you're willing to sell it for at least three money you cannot give anything away for free you cannot sell it for less than three you have to sell something people have to give you at least three money but you can bargain with people you could say I'm gonna sell it. I want to sell this cider but it's up for sale for five well two people could say "Ooh, I'll take it for five well then you say okay who wants it more who's willing to give me six and you know that's that's part of the game that has always been interesting to me um, it's really the only player interaction in the game other than people taking your buildings or people that you might have wanted um, but you can always put something up for sale and you can always um, purchase something off of someone else's board okay so I believe that covers everything as far as the um, standard game goes and uh, one last thing is there are these special figures over here these guys can only be hired or unlocked as part of specific explorations so they just kind of sit over here ready to go if you need them you could probably just leave them in the box because maybe one or two might come out during a game maybe none at all so but they don't ever get shuffled into the regular ones because they're actually really nice workers. You have to earn them through exploration. So the solo AI that was uh, devised by a Board Game Geek user essentially has this table here and I know it's kind of small, but you can see here, and I've actually uh, expanded this table so that each round has its own um, column. And it's telling you that what actions are available to the AI each round. So you can see here that the round one, the AI is not going to explore, and they're obviously not going to harvest because chances are they're not going to get a building that quickly. So you would simply roll a D8 in this case, and whatever number comes up, that's the action that they're going to do. Now, something that I added to this table is these little pips. These little pips are saying, well, this first turn they're only going to build once uh, in round two they can explore up to two times uh, they can labor an infinite number of times in round two all the way over so this is uh, essentially what you're going to do when it's on the player's turn is you're going to roll a d8 you're going to determine their action um, and there is some additional instructions on for which buildings they're going to choose and you can see here We're not going to worry about giving them actual people Because uh, they're just going to get three four five and then six turns depending on the round so um, The only thing that I felt was lacking from the solo AI is that there is no uh, in the end game They just say score of your points and I'm assuming it's like a beat your own score type of thing what I am going to do, however, is I'm going to keep track of the buildings that they bring in and I'm going to keep track of the goods that they harvest and I'm going to add them to this dummy player board over here. So I'm going to keep track of the buildings. I'm going to pull the people that they hire off and just keep them off to the side. But any goods that they would actually harvest off the buildings, I'm going to take and I'm going to add automatically to the track. If they're the first person to labor, they will steal the cider token, but they'll put it up for sale. They're not ever going to worry about putting needing cider or the same thing with medicine. If for some reason they gain medicine because they bought a building, they're going to put it up for sale. And it, they're not going to bargain with me. I can buy it for exactly three um, because they're not actually going to have to recuperate people. 
Um, the solo AI does give them instructions to purchase buildings with beds, which you have to do in the regular game. So that kind of mitigates that. They're not always just gonna go after the one with the best resources on it. So at the end of the game, I'm going to compare the amount of points they have gained from buildings and outposts built and their um, achievement track down here to um, my setup. Uh, what I don't know is whether I will actually track my reputation tracker down here because they will not be gaining any reputation. They just go exploring and they're always successful, but they don't gain anything from it. Um, due to that, since they're not gonna gain any items from exploring, I'm gonna say that if they have uh, say two places with resources on them, when they harvest a single harvest action, they're gonna get one of everything. They don't have to just pick one, which is what I will have to do. So we're gonna see if that kinda um, gives me something to shoot for and gives me somebody to try and play against as opposed to just trying to beat my own, uh, accumulate a score as high as possible. Because uh, if, that, if that's the case, then all the AI is really doing is stealing things from me and making my life a little more difficult, but I don't have a goal to shoot for. So now I will have a goal to shoot for. And in our next video, we are going to actually play a solo playthrough game. And we're gonna see how it compares when we keep track of the buildings and the goods for the Automa player. So uh, join me next time as I do a full solo playthrough of Above and Below. If you uh, enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. It does a lot to help. Uh, once again, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.